Welcome to a special edition of the interview. I am extremely excited to be joined by Scott Harrison, who is the founder and the face of Six Pack Revolution. Scott, it's been so long. I know, three years, can you believe? I can't believe. Last time you were in Malta was three years ago? Yep. Yep, three wow. and a half. Three and a half years ago. Wow. That's when we did the radio thing. That's when we did a radio show together. Yes, we did. And we found out that we actually have lived in the, a couple, the of streets, road, yeah, yeah. couple of streets away from each other. And here you are again with Six Pack Revolution again, yes? Yes. So it's, a, it's a completely different ball game to where it was three and a half years ago, that's for sure, which we're going to talk about. Exactly, because I want to get to the bottom of Thank you for journey. giving me the special. I can't believe it. And I've missed your dimples, by the way. Oh, thank you. You're such a charmer. <laughs> well, listen, what I want to do on this particular show is I want to get to not necessarily why you are, where you are now. We'll get to that in a minute. But I want to go back right to the very beginning. Because if for anybody who doesn't know, Six Pack Revolution is a lifestyle program that revolutionizes you physically and mentally. Correct. And it has taken off. You, I think you mentioned just before we came onto the show, four and a half thousand people are doing it right this minute. Right this minute, over over four thousand six hundred right now. That's incredible. Yeah. But this obviously started from somewhere, and I'm assuming it started with you. So, what's the Scott Harrison story that brought you up to where you are today? Okay, so this is a bit that my wife cringes at. But um, so in 2015 December, I was picking up the kids from school for very rare occasions because I was always working. And I was sitting there just waiting for them to all come out and the, I was looking at the parents. And it was very apparent that the parents were overweight, poisoned, bloated, some couldn't even walk properly, they were waddling. Um, and I was thinking, well, as the kids ran out to their role models, I was like, well, that isn't very good, is it? And then I realised I was one of them. So you were not looking then in 2015 as you look now? No. Okay. No, I'm, I was... So um, I decided for my New Year's resolution in January that I was going to get a six pack and I said I was going to get it in 90 days because back then like 90 days was the term that everyone spoke about, 12 weeks, 90 days, that type of thing. So I chose a visual um, goal rather than oh, I'm going to lose some weight or this and the other so I could focus and visualise the picture of me looking like this. Um, and I blogged it on Facebook. It was called the Scott's Too Hot 90 Day Six Pack Challenge back then. <laughs> Scott's too hot. Scott's too hot. <laughs> and um, so I blogged it, about 36 others wanted to join me. I said to them, I'm not messing about here, so if you're coming on, you do it properly, we're going to do it. I... Whoa, 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 you d hang on, I'm going to stop you there, because you talk about doing it. So you've decided, let's go back a little bit further, you've decided that you're going to do Scott's to hot, you're going to get yourself a six pack in 90 days, this is your target. You're obviously a very driven individual anyway, but you weren't in a fit place. You no. were not in a fit, tanned toned place where did you get the program where did you get the idea of how you're going to achieve that from okay so i just started by running that was one thing i thought i've got, okay. got to start moving so yeah. one kilometer got okay. up at silly okay. before work so it's like six seven o'clock in the morning did a one kilometer got ready for work went to work but then i just started to work out my food so i cut out all the obvious things and then i started to look into nutrition and um how to feed the human body how it should be fed. Okay. Um, I actually was really looking into a guy called Dr. Barry Sears in America that he was um, doing a lot of things with Olympians and athletes and stuff. And it all came from where his mum was really had bad inflammation in her body. And so he was working out how to reduce diet induced inflammation, balance hormones, build a, a body that works at its optimum, which was for me, it was like my ears opened. It wasn't like, I didn't want to do some stupid fad that was unsustainable. I wanted to actually work out how should we feed the human body. So I, I researched, 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 um, and that's grown, it's still growing now. Like I still make tweaks now on different things when I learn more and stuff like that. But back then, it was really basic, like, you know, fish, veg, and stuff like that. But we, I managed to get 19 of them to the finish line, but the results were like, no one had ever seen anything on the planet like it before in such a short time. So this was your goal. You'd gone onto Facebook, you'd said, I'm going to do this, and you got 90, you got 36 friends, or? Uh, some I didn't even know, but they would follow, like, they were on my Facebook. You know, you have Facebook friends you don't even know sometimes. You yeah, know? plenty of them. But I told them, <laughs> like, and I was quite, I found that I had this um, flair for keeping people engaged in a sergeant major with love kind of way. So... I didn't take no crap, 
but at the same time, um, I, they were motivated somehow. And obviously I've, I've built that even more so and, and also put my foot in my mouth many a time and realized, why well, I shouldn't say that. And, okay. then, and so I've learned how to be, I mean, if you, some people say now I'm a pussycat, whereas back then I was really like hard, <laughs> hard, but um, it works. So the remarkable thing is that this was only seven years ago. Yes. So seven years ago, you're in the car park, waiting for the kids, feeling bloated, decide to do something, and then you bring all these people together to do it with you. When you decided to allow people to join you in this mission, you've done your research, you've decided how you're going to do it, was there a moment where you thought, oh, this had better work, because otherwise I'm not going to look so good? No, I never, I've never once thought to myself that, what if it doesn't work? Because I think I'd done the right research. There was no doubt in my mind that what we were doing was correct. So if you follow it, then you're this guaranteed. And I've had tens of thousands, probably hundred thousand now participants in sixty-four countries. We are now, um, and every single one of them, if they follow it to the finish line, every single one of them is a wow. So we're going to come to that in a minute because I wanted to also discover and discuss the differentiation between six pack revolution and the Aikens diet or Atkins diet or um, keto or, you know, there's so many of these things around. There's so many uh, diet programs, fitness programs. You might go to a personal trainer. So why is it different? Because as I just said, there's so much of it about there. Um, Okay, so let's go Atkins. Okay. Eat a fried breakfast all day, every day, if you wish. Just say that sentence to yourself. And eat a, a fried well, you breakfast. Well, because the Atkins is basically no um, um, carbs, carbs, pretty much. exactly. So you can, on the Atkins, it, but this is why people get kidney stones, hair falls out. Or, and you can research this yourself. This isn't me. I, I try not my best to slag off other programs, but that's what, what can happen. Keto is high fat. Um, you get bad breath because you're going into ketosis and all this. Like, oh, it's just not sustainable. Intermittent fasting is just calorie deficit because you're squeezing everything into a small amount of time. They try and sell it to you that you um, you go into autophagy, which is where the cells regenerate. Right. But that doesn't really happen till about two or three days. You're eating every day on intermittent fasting. So it's just a posh word to try and make you go into a calorie deficit. So all of these things, why would you, why would you eat only eight hours in a day, squeeze everything into this thing when you can eat all day. Because um, on the six pack revolution, as you know, because you've, you've, you've been there and you know loads of people that have done it as well, you don't stop eating. Why would you? That is one of the things that people say when they start. They're like, oh my word, there's so much food. <laughs> and even me, you know, good grief, I've got to eat again. But then you change the way that you're, you are eating and you change what you eat and suddenly it makes sense. I'm still gonna go for the Scott human story before we get to the six pack story. So you set yourself this target, this New Year's resolution, you do this for 90 days, you get yourself a six pack. Yes. What did the missus say? She, she loved it, but also, cause it was quite, I'll imagine my first time, I'm quite intense, right? So, she, so um, obviously she was, she was proud of me, usual story, she was touching me, like <laughs> pour, pouring me, grating cheese and all the stuff like that. <laughs> <laughs> and she, and she um, so she loved all that side of it. But then um, people were begging me to do another one. And um, that one finished in April. And then I decided to do another one in September. And she went to me, you're not going to do that again, are you? And I said, well, just one more. Just one more. But you kept working out in the meantime. The goal of the one in September was to bring people along with you or you needed to no, do it again? No, there was nothing. I, that just was, a, was an organic thing. I didn't plan to have anyone with me I was doing it on my own but just people said can I join can I join so then this second one we had 120 people join um the next one that I, that I put out which was called the Scott to uh, no this was called um I think I called this the lean team six pack challenge or okay, something okay okay something like that and um and 120 people joined that one because they all wanted they kept people saying do another one do another one um and Again, the results were insane. And then I realized I had something here that I could maybe create and grow. And my, my, I've been trying to save the world because not only is the body visual transformation crazy. I mean, no one's ever seen anything. You've seen six pack. No one produces results like that anywhere. But what it does here and for your emotional state, but also for chronic illnesses, you know, we've got um, like a 100% success rate in 
right, that's a bit of a long list. I won't do them all. But sleep apnea, scoliosis, um, type 1, type 2 diabetes, psoriasis, eczema, IBS, Crohn's, ME, MS, fibromyalgia, blood pressure, cholesterol, you name it, either brought to a much more manageable level or okay. you walk away without it. We've even on the program right now, we've got a lady 40 odd days in, the doctor's considering undiagnosing ME and fibromyalgia because she hasn't got the symptoms anymore. How is that even possible? I didn't even know that was possible. That's quite a big deal. It's a big deal. Type one, uh, type, why, type two why? diabetes. I mean, no, but seriously, why and how? Okay, well, things like type two diabetes is obvious. You know, you can, if you eat better, that you can deal with your blood sugars and stuff. Type one, the pancreas doesn't reproduce, uh, doesn't make the insulin, so um, doesn't produce the insulin. So you can bring your injecting. We've had people go from seven times a day down to one. Okay, that type of thing is quite kind of kind of normal. But to undiagnose something that's what you would appear to be so serious, so debilitating, such a um, disabling condition was like, wow, you know. And but this is through what's being eaten or is it, because there's two parts to it, isn't there? There's what you eat and there's what you do. And what you think. So I don't forget, okay. my, I've, got, I've got the mindset bit in there as well. So I try and change people's relationship with food, with drink, with themselves, with their life, with looking at life from a much more positive perspective. And I always say, like, you know, if, if your mind works, then everything works. Yeah. Um, and, if you've got, and if you've got control of your mind, you've got control of everything. So, you know, you know it's, I, I'd need to speak to that doctor and ask him myself, to be fair, why, like how, um, in the sense of like such a big turnaround. But you are what you eat. Yes, you are what you eat. So in a, just in a, give me in a very light, short and concise way, what is it on the six pack that you do eat and don't eat? eat or drink. The obvious one is alcohol. It's a it's 70, 70 days, 75, 75 days. 75 now. days no alcohol. Yeah. So it's not that it wasn't it's not 90 days where we only do 75 now alcohol. It's now a 75 day program because I have found I worked out how to get better results in less time. Okay. All so right. that's how it's grown over time. So it's now a 75 day program. Yeah. There's no alcohol, there's no crisp sweets, chocolate, biscuits, cakes, obvious things to say diet coke, coke, lemon. It's obvious stuff that everyone would say, well that's obvious. But what people don't realize is it's the balance on the plate of every meal, snack, and shake that we have. So for example, if I was to eat a bowl of rice, mm -hmm. I would have an insulin spike that would go like this. And your body's supposed to have an insulin spike when you eat, that's normal, but this okay. would be a, if I ate the same bowl of rice with a palm size and thickness piece of chicken that was maybe cooked with a teaspoon of olive oil for some healthy fats, that spike would not be the same and then it'd be nice and balanced. Okay. So even though I ate the same rice, so it's really, people don't understand, it's really important what you eat at the same time as well. It's not like, oh, I can have the rice now and I'll have a bit of chicken later. Do you but see did, what I mean? Did you learn this just through experience or research? Everything. Or you've had to study it or you've taken advice from someone else? I mean, th this is profound. Yeah. And then, okay, I'm going to go back again. What was your job when you were sitting in the car park waiting for your kids? What was it that you were doing? I had a double glazing company. This is not anything like double glazing. <laughs> no. And I'm assuming that you didn't study food and protein and, and no. balance and carbs as part of your double glazing company. No. no, this is all new. This is all recent. My wife's now a fully qualified nutritionist that specializes in the applications of physical activity as well. Okay. So she's, she's pretty cool. So she came on board. She... Right, I've got a GP on my team, a doctor right. of biochemistry on my team, a psychotherapist on my team, a doctor of chiropractic on my team that sit behind me. So I've got this very powerful world-class team that we talk. I think and... that's what I was getting to because that's really important. It's not just Scott with a lovely no. set of no, six it's not just You've me. got a team that supports you to, to come up with what the six pack is. Yeah, so but, I, but I, to be fair, I don't like, they're there as, as that sort of team behind me, but um, I created it and I keep tweaking it all myself as I'm like, because I, I absorb off of everyone as well. Mm. I'm, I've got this like, I'm learning. I've got diplomas in um, nutrition and um, I'm currently doing a psychology diploma because I kind of would like to open my own practice maybe if I get time. Um, so I'm, I'm doing that and I've also, obviously I'm a PT, but before that, I wasn't a PT. I'm a PT new. So can I ask you, let's move away just from Six Pack for a second and come back to you. You're, you had a, a double glazing company and now you're doing this, which is really chalk and cheese. Couldn't be further away from, 
from each other. Psychologically, emotionally, and kind of relating to the people around you, that journey is also massive about you and your lifestyle. Is this where you wanted to be when you said back in that, that uh, 2015, I'm going to do this? Or is this just completely off the scale, no idea this was ever going to happen, but you're happy where you're at? No, I knew I was going to do this, yeah. I've, I've, I feel that my whole life's led up to this point. I've had, I've had some tough experiences in my life, and I am now know why. Because it gives me, puts me on this platform where I can help and empathise with so many people. I was badly bullied as a child. I was um, weed on, and you know when you are more than once, and when you are in that place, it's a very dark place. To that you allow that to happen to you, you're so scared that you do nothing about it. So I now deal with people in very dark places, and I can feel and empathise with them, and I can help pull them out of the hole that they're in, and shine some light where there was darkness. I was, I've been through a divorce. My wife was seeing three other men, not the wife I'm with now, ex-wife. So I know loss from that side where I get a lot of people come on the program, they're, they're going through a loss like that. Mm. I've lost a little boy, so I know that loss. Although there's, there's levels, you know, some people have lost their, bo their children at 10 and 11 or two, or, but I can, I can kind of feel what they're going through. I, can, I've, I had an eating disorder. I was bulimic severely for over 30 years. I was just... I threw up every single meal that I ever ate. I would go into an all-you-can-eat buffet on holiday. You know, on holiday, it's all buffet. Isn't it? I'd be sick, eat, be sick, eat, be sick, eat, be sick. Right. And everyone knew. I know. I thought I'm hiding it. My eyes are watering. I can. I know. I'm. I almost know that I'm not hiding it. But everyone's too embarrassed to mention it to me. Mm. I've done it all, and I'm. I'm now doing the job that I. I, I love. I'm. I don't get one day off. I get probably Christmas afternoon. They leave me alone. I think. But I love it. What you've just described there is a real human side of, of a painful journey. And what you've also suggested as having had bulimia and anorexia myself, your mindset to take you to that place is incredibly dark, as you mentioned. So is the relationship between unhealthy lifestyles very intrinsically connected with being unhappy, having being in an unhappy place. Is that how we find ourselves? Being overweight, unfit, eating the wrong thing? Is that, is it not, probably not necessarily connected, but is it often I think it's. That? I think it is connected. All I will say to all those people that are watching and listening and going like, I'm in a dark place. Um, the sun, the light shines brightest in the darkest places. And if you're, only if you're willing to open your eyes and see it. And it's really important that um, if you accept that life is just full of obstacles, and it's, we're on an obstacle course, right? And we've just got to keep getting over them. And, and the more we get over them, the, the, the more um, easy the, the next obstacle is, right? So you've got to, it's, it's, it's just a switch in mentality. And the reason most people are riddled with anxiety in this world, like the whole world's riddled with anxiety, they give out antidepressants more than they give out antibiotics now. It's insane. And let's put the people that have had PTSD, been to war, had a bad thing happen to them like when they're younger and let's just put a few of those to one side the reason everyone else is riddled with anxiety is they don't eat properly people don't understand that when you come to six pack they're, they're usually maybe i mean i do i've got athletes come to six pack they want to be faster at their sport or something like that. i've got people that are really skinny come to six pack they want to build up and I, i've done all of that and it, it, the the results are equally ridiculous but the majority is people that are overweight and want to lose weight. Now they know if they've got a fat belly, heart and lungs don't work properly, their hair's wiry and their skin's like wrinkly and they know that, and they, they can't even walk up the stairs without, they know they've got to move around and eat better. But what everyone forgets is that the mind is a part of that body too. So what goes in here feeds your brain. So if you, if Nan dies, and this is no disrespect to anyone who's mourning that, but we're, we're built to be able to mourn, to grieve, to be stressed, to be depressed. That we don't need a tablet to dull everything that we do. But because we are so bad at what we put in, can't handle it. Same as your heart can't handle it if you're gonna run up, run up the street because you don't eat properly. It's exactly the same. But people don't make that correlation. They don't get that that's been affected by just what you eat and drink. Is there a particular you, you talk about your, your, your six-pack 
um, subscribers, as if they're family, as if they're friends. Is there a particular story that really sticks in your mind that you're like, that just was the epitome of six pack? Oh, there's so many. I've got, as I said, we're tens of thousands and we're really successful. I get about 70% to the finish line, which on a program like mine is huge. 20% would be huge, but 70%. So there is thousands of them. To try and pick one would be like, oh. But I t one beautiful thing is though, and I get this a lot, but someone actually wrote this on a card and sent it. Who sends cards anymore? She usually just texts it. And she just said, she said, I just need to thank you. <laughs> Emotional. Um, for giving me my children their mummy back. And that was like, wow. That's a big deal. Mm. But there's so many people like, come from alcoholism, self-harm, um, suicide uh, attempts, and they come into the program. In fact, I do know someone. Oh, am I allowed to speak? He's, he's immortal. I won't say a name, so I can say the situation. Bless him. His daughter got diagnosed with um, cancer through uh, when COVID 2020, the, the main part. And um, he couldn't go in to see her whenever he wanted. Couldn't go, the wife, husband and wife couldn't go in to see their little girl. And because of the stupid rules, mm. I'm going to say stupid rules in this scenario. Mm. And then she, she had her 15th birthday in there and then she died just before Christmas. And he joined Six Pack because he knew he had to focus and he nailed it. And he was on the show, he was on this, was this show. Yeah, I know yeah. exactly who you're talking about. Yeah, I'm going, to, I'm going to see him for the first time in the flesh on Wednesday. Amazing guy. Yeah. And I think what, that's what's really impressed on me, what you're, you're talking about here now is, yeah, it's great to look great, it's great to have a six pack, but it's that, so much mental, more than that. that mental um, accomplishment, that taking control, taking back control, because what you mentioned there, you talked about self-harm, you talked about alcohol abuse, you talked about eating disorders, all, sorts of, all those sorts of things. That's a lack That's a lack of control. That's a control that you've given away. You've given it to a, a, a mind state that is not healthy. And you're talking about taking back control you're and literally, being in You're charge. literally me talking right now on my Zooms. I tell them I'm going to give the key, I'm going to give you your key back to happiness. I'm going to give you the control back where you decide what you eat, not it decides what goes in. And it isn't because you're, at the end of the program, because we change the relationship, it's not because you're not letting yourself have it. You don't want it. One piece of chocolate's enough, or um, one biscuit's enough. You don't have to do the whole pack. And you're, not, and you're satisfied at one or two, not the whole pack. It's not that you're stopping yourself. And that's because we're addicted to the drugs, the salt, the caffeine, the alcohol, the, the fat, the sugar. And we don't realize it because it's all so normal to do. But only when you do something like the six pack revolution. And of course, there's nothing else in the world like the six pack revolution. On the universe, there's no other planet in Mars or anywhere. Um, you realize actually how the human body should feel. And you realize I've never even lived, I've just been existing. And when you feel that, that life come into you, it's like, it's life changing. And it really is. And that's why it's spread like coronavirus. It's spread over the world six pack at the same speed, literally. And it's been, it's been, it's such a pleasure to be the person that's making that sort of happen. I mean, I can't imagine what that feels like, but we'll, let's talk about that for a second because you just said it's spread. I'm not gonna use the coronavirus analogy. My, know, my analogy is always poor. <laughs> <laughs> but it has spread and it's also elevated yeah. because now, Whereas you mentioned before, whereas you might approach well-known celebs or people and say, hey, do you fancy doing it? Now people are coming to you. Yes. Now it's Scott Harrison on the TV. It's Scott Harrison. And that must be, you know, that's why I asked you, did you see this as your end goal? Did you see that it would take you this far? Because this surely must be above and beyond what you thought you'd be able to achieve, or did you just know, and what does it look like now? No, I, I knew I was gonna do this. I, I, I'm not finished, this isn't the end goal. I've, I'm not even started. This is like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna attempt to save the world. That's my, that's my plan. And I'm, I'm also, I'm 50 next year, and- Looking good. Thank you. And I'm going to, I don't think I'll ever stop. I, I reckon I'll still be doing this when I'm 100. Because um, 
even if I'm just the one talking and all the other bits are being done, and I'm overlooking, going, just make sure that's done, make sure. They're, they're all right. Because I love this, I love this part of it, this speaking to people and, as I said, shining that light when they're, because everyone's in a dark place, you know. It's, it's shocking how many people are really just stuck. It's, it's insane how that happens. It's, it's mind blowing. And it's all over something that doesn't even exist. They're all living in the past. And so it's, it's just, I tell people. Explain that to me because I'm, I'm trying to, under, to unravel what you're saying. People are living in the past. So most what people, respect? well, most people again are suffering from something that's happened in their past. That might be, I mean, I've had people on my program that have been abused as children or bullied like I was, or um, there's, there's so many things that have been in a war. I've, had, I've got people in, on the program that have been in the worst wars and all sorts of stuff. And the, the thing is, and I'm not making light of those situations, but um, I try and get them to trivialize it so that they can handle it. Because at the moment it's overwhelming and they can't handle it. And so they spend their life in depression and misery and they're stuck in this room bouncing off walls. And so what I try to do to trivialize it is explain to them that one, it doesn't exist because it doesn't. It's just a memory. And I'll prove that if I cut your memory clear to now, would you ever be worrying about anything that's happened before now? Well, no. No. So it's just a memory that we keep replaying, torturing ourselves. And sometimes you've just got to accept that the world is full of not very nice people. And it's not our fault. Unless, but to allow them to keep debilitating our life and stop us moving forward is almost like, why? Like, just accept it. You're not the only one. Everyone has gone through something. And if you can accept it and move forward and actually focus on what you want instead of what you don't want, it's a bit like when you're, um, if you're going through, um, this analogy I heard the other day, which I loved, a skier that's going through the Solalan. They're not looking at the poles, they're looking at the path. If you keep looking at the poles, you're gonna hit them. Look at the path you're going through, or the trees. Don't look at the trees, look at the, the space between the trees if you're gonna ski through them. And if you think about it like that, we don't do that. We constantly look at the trees. Big mistake. This is a massive amount of psychology behind this. And I'm assuming then that Six Pack Revolution is really about getting your mind into the right place, the psychology of where you want to be, envisaging where you're going to be, and then using exercise, readjustment of your thinking, and the right foods to get you there. Correct. And the, all of the benefits that that comes from. So that's a holistic approach to resetting your lifestyle. Yeah, and that's why it's different from keto and intermittent fasting and these things that aren't sustainable. And, and just while I'm on the sustainable thing, at the end of the program, I teach everyone how to keep their results and still party twice a week. Nice. So that was me. I had to find that best of both worlds. But then, Scott, how with that with this program? Let me let me ask you a question. With this program that is changing a lifestyle, how do you support the people that are in the program. I mean, because you obviously, Scott Harrison, can't go around to every single one of your 4,600 people and you know, hey dude, I'm hey, listen, I'm there, I'm standing right behind you and giving them that, that encouragement. How does that actually look like in reality? I've managed to get an amazing team. Every single person that works on Six Pack comes from being a participant, everyone. Website, uh, coachy, the coaches, the admin, the photo coordinators, the templators, accountant, Everyone has come from being in the program, which I love that story too. So I've kind of created this, come here. Because they all understand it. They're all in the blood of the program, if you like. They're all in the DNA of it. They get it. They know what I'm like. They know where I'm coming from. It all makes sense. So they can apply literally six pack to everybody. So I've got assistant coaches, coaches, head coaches. So it's like a filter system that comes up to me, but I'm in every single group. So we've got 4,600 on the program at the moment, but over the year we're going to have tens of thousands. So, but I'm in every single group and I'm available to anyone. So I tell them, don't ask me if, can we change broccoli for kale? Don't do that. But if you are in a place where you're something really personal or you want to speak to me only, then just let me know when I'm there. And I speak to Pete every day, loads of people. So you really mean it seriously, you, you work every day? Every day. Every Sa day. Saturday, Sunday, Monday, I don't have a weekend, nothing. No more double glazing. No. No more any of that. <laughs> I'm grateful for what it did for me because I had a very good company, but I, 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 it, wasn't, it, was, it was too negative for me, that industry. 
I need. I knew I was put on this. I, I felt like I've got to be able to give something more than for this world. I can't be here just for this reason. And, and, it, and it came to me like that. And in an in industry that's saturated, like every on social media, every other things like this, that. And that can be definitely, can be, that drives me mad. Let me ask you about that because you just mentioned about social media. Let's turn, just move away from the the the, the social the sorry the psychological impact. Let's move away from the lifestyle just for a second. Six pack revolution. The title suggests that you're going to join the program and get yourself six pack. It does suggest that, but that's not the truth. Okay. Um, the reason it's called the six pack revolution obviously it come from me, me getting a six pack, but it's such a big brand now I can't change it. And I, I sat and thought, how could I change six part revolution? Maybe there's six parts, but then it doesn't say body. So people know it's that. So I've sat and thought about how, because I, I know a lot of people will go, well, that's not for me. But we have, we go from like a size 18 dress to a 10 all the time in one wave on the program. No saggy skin, no nothing. So I do, I've, I've got people in the program now that are a size 26 dress. And so it is reaching those that I wanted to reach. But the amount of people that actually get a six pack is a fraction because you have to be at a certain level. You can't go from a size 26 dress to a six pack in 75 days, obviously, but she'll lose six dress sizes maybe. So, but I think that it's got out enough now that it's not just about getting a six pack, that's a fraction. And to be fair, the visual transformation, although mentally like mind blowing, everyone goes, like, how, how? They accuse me of giving people steroids, putting heads off, chopping heads off and putting them on other bodies. Photoshop and all that, and you know, I don't. When I'm so anal about the photos, I don't even, I don't touch them because <laughs> I'm so, because I won't. Um, and it's it's all compliments, obviously, but the mental transformation far outweighs even that. But people won't see that until they're in. They only see the mental. And that's what I physical. wanted to get behind because you mentioned social media, and of course, social media at the moment demands that we are as perfect as we can be, and. In itself, in itself creates a lot of anxiety, a lot of stress, and that's kind of the thing that you want to get away from. You want so it's not about okay, we're going to get you a six pack and everything. It's about that whole lifestyle thing, and I just wanted to be clear about that because that social media making sure you have a six pack and look amazing just sounds a tiny bit kind of yeah. No, it's nothing about that. It. It, everyone says it's so much more than a six pack. The six pack is like that much <coughs> grain of sand. The rest is. Is far outweighs it, and it's like you know, you the social media thing. I hope that I actually showing because people show their bad side, right? Mm -hmm. In six because yeah, they, yeah, yeah. they show their before and their after. Yeah, so yeah. I'm kind of hoping that I'm bringing a little bit of that back in that it's not show the real thing, you know, and don't be too ashamed of where you were. Be proud that you found it never too late to turn it around. And you ever look at the photographs of you in 2015? You My favourite pit, photos? they come in every wave. So on week two of every wave, once everyone settles down, I put in my pictures and show them what I did. So they see all my fat photos and all my ripped photos and it motivates them to, to say like, well, if you can do it in, in your 40s, because I, I wasn't ripped in, only until I was 42 was when I turned this. They all, a lot of people go, oh my God, I thought you were like this from in your 20s. I went, no, this is only a few years ago. This is only seven years I'm ago. Walking, what you're doing now was me a few years ago. Which I think is the motivation and it's the, the I mean, story the that we all I'm need to in. understand. Yeah. We have to have that kind of normality and that this is how I was and now you can get to this point and I've done it, therefore everyone else can. Final question for you, because I wanted to ask you, is it for everybody? And I think the easier way of asking that, is it for everybody? is you know you have these celebrities now that are doing six pack revolution you have people putting their name to it you have DJs you have TV presenters you've been on television across the UK and so on but when i asked you is it available for everybody you said yes who would you most like to see on six pack revolution who would you most, if you could choose anyone in the world that you would like to guide through a journey to six pack revolution who would it be There's two parts to this answer. I'd love James Corden to do it, but I love him. I'm not sure because I love his chubbiness. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. I'll be I'll be wanting him to do it, but also because I think it'd be funny. I think it'd be inspirational. He's just such a great person. I'd love to meet him, but at the same time, is his thing is being chubby, isn't it? Yeah. So, but then would he morph into something new that would then be a new thing? So I think. Um, James Corden would probably be the one I would Corden. choose. Yeah. We'll give him a call. 
We'll see if we can get on. See if you can get them on. But what I will say about can anyone do this program? We've got 18 to 76 year olds in 64 different countries, colors, creeds, abilities, disabilities, people with no legs, um, people here with cerebral palsy where half of the body doesn't even work, wheelchairs. And the six pack revolution isn't set in stone. It can bend with, with the wind because we are live with you all day, every day from before you start till after you finish. And if we need to change anything, we can do it like that. You ask a question, it's answered in minutes. And we're there supporting you from dawn till dusk. So you can't lose, all you've got to do is have the mentality to whatever they tell me to do just for 75 days, I'm going to do it and see what it does for me. I'm going to ask one last question. I said it was my last question. Now I'm going, why do people not do it? Why, what would be the barrier to stop somebody doing it so that we can then, you know, so somebody's listening to this and they're thinking, yeah, but it's not for me. What, what's the barrier? And how do you f diffuse that barrier? I think... Because well, there must be a lot of people that go, this just not for me. Yeah. Um, one, probably because of the name, would be one for which we discussed a minute ago. Yeah. Calling it a six-pack revolution, well, that's not for me. That's too extreme. I'll do something else. When it isn't, it just seems... Yeah, you're a 76-year-old. So. Yeah, I've got a 76-year-old. <laughs> Striving for a six-pack. Yeah. Um, and as I said, I've got people with, with disabilities, so, and, and, and huge people, you know, really overweight, um, that you think, like, oh my God, you know. Um, but they, 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 people find it through, through a family member or someone else and go, no, as it goes, no, you need to do this. This isn't what you think. You've got to do this. So people, why would people not do it? I think, I think there's a lot of people that, and you get this, don't you? Like, they join every diet program going and this, this isn't a diet, I hate the word diet because it's been hijacked by something you jump on and jump off as quick as possible. But um, you get people that have all these good intentions but when they realize there's some work to be done, then they will back off from it. But I like to think that if they do go for it, because we, are, we, we deal with this part of it as well, mm. you're more likely to, I've tens of thousands of people that say to me, I've never stuck to anything, I can't believe I've stuck to this. But that's different because we are, we are with you. I'm pulling, punching, kicking, dragging everyone to the finish line. Come on! And then if they if they fall, I'm going. Come here. Come back up. You know. So, um, I think people find it tough to step outside the comfort zone, and that's because they don't eat properly as well, because their mind is poisoned. So it's a vicious circle. But hopefully, if they find it within them to do it, and again because it's spread so organically by people that see someone who's done it, mm. they, then hopefully they might believe in themselves a bit more. But by the end of it, they'll be a completely different person. Scott Harrison, I'm cheering you on. I want to see you change the world. I want to Thank see you. where this ends up. And when you're 50 next year, I I'm, gonna, I'm gonna chase you down at 100. I'll be like behind <laughs> you going, Scott, Scott, what are you doing now? I'm wishing you all the very best Thank for you. changing Thank the world. Thank you for having me. Lots of love. <laughs>